And if you check, you can grow, you can have chickens in Rockville and chickens in other parts. Can you have chickens in D.C. and poultry? No. Damn. Virginia. All right. All right. All right. Really? I, I know in the city of Rockville, you're allowed to have poultry. I wouldn't have guinea fowl to annoy my neighbors <laughs> and fruits to scare people. Um, but that would be awesome. But um, Mullins. You can, you can, I think Southern Exposure has some of these, but some other companies also have some of these old traditional herbs. People call them weeds, but they're really helpful. Like mullein and rabbit tobacco. Uh, mullein was always like a tea. I think that was, and whorehound was a good one. There's one that is kind of mysterious called John the Copper Root. Mm -hmm. yep. Now nobody's really sure what John the Copper Root really is. Or they look, you know, they bought these little hoodoo companies out of Brooklyn. I mean, come on now. Um, but it was like this, it was a healing herb, but it was also more of a, I don't know how to put it. Um, it was more like a scare tactic. Don't mess with me because I have a John the Copper Root in my pocket. And my great grandfather apparently had one of these at all times with him. Um, so there's all these little, you know, healing herbs. I remember the one time at the lady at the Folklife Festival, she came from uh, the West and she was um, Mashika, she was, she was Aztec and she said to me, you know, you're walking on healing things all the time, you just don't know it. And she says, in our, what our people say is, if it's in the clouds, it's good for your head. If it's in the wind, it's good for your lungs, and if it's on the ground, it's good for your feet. So you know how you have the uh, plantain, not the, not the banana family thing, not musa, whatever, but um, the actual little green? Yeah. She said those are, not only do you, a lot of us know how to eat them, you boil the hell out of them when they're young and you eat them, they're good green, but also um, she said they're good for athlete's foot, any kind of fungal issues in the skin. She said oil from that, and I tried it, it actually works. She said, you know, she said make a tea, and just like stick your hands in it, and it's really good. And it, you know, it helps heal things, it's really nice. And then another thing we have in this area that's very important is poke. Yeah. All right, who knows about poke? Poke looks like these really delicious purple berries, don't they? But they're so poisonous. <laughs> um, a couple of, uh, not a couple of years ago, I should stop saying it, it was the 1960s, I wouldn't even allow that. The, this Safeway chain in Texas decided they were going to be cute and make cans of poke greens. Because so many country folk love poke greens. Well, there's a secret to this. Both of my grandmothers from different parts of the South told me the secret. Do not pick poke unless it has no red in the leaves and it must be young and we must still boil it two to three times, changing the water. But it will still retain its nutritional aspects. Um, but the one thing anybody from the South will tell you about poke is, and they said the exact same thing no matter who I'm talking to, the exact same words come out of their mouth. It will clean you out <laughs> from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And I, I'm not kidding you when I say this, that, oh, ain't she pretty. I'm not kidding you when I say, I'm talking about both of y'all. The exact same words come out of their mouth. The top of your head to the bottom of your feet. It'll clean you out. So just be aware that you're going to get all this lovely vitamin A and C and all this great stuff. And then you're going to have to run to that outhouse. <laughs> I mean, it will do the trick. It, and it was always eaten as a spring herb. I mean, I've read a lot of narratives about life around this area, and everybody had poke, white, black, whatever. They all had the poke, the poke read. Lamb's quarter is another good one that's also healing and edible. Lamb's quarters is good. Um, milkweed is good for healing. That was another big one that they used to use. Um, there's a lot of them. And I also, you should know this, I plant by the signs, mm -hmm. which is a really cool thing, discipline to learn. It's not quick work. You don't just decide one year, oh, I'm going to plant everything by the signs. It actually takes a couple of different, couple of years to get used to how the rhythm of the moon and the sun work together to plant things. But it's actually a pretty interesting system. Sometimes it's complete yes. Mm -hmm. Other times it works like a charm. It's really interesting. You know, you never, the big, the big part of planting with the signs is you never plant on a waxing moon. Yeah, that's important. Now, certain things don't plan on that. Or waning moon, that's important. Waning moon, waning moon, waning moon, right. Waning wax. Waxing is waning is decline. Yeah. Okay, so waning moon. So that's important. 